Okay. Let's jump to Framber. This is a four-pitch punch out of Mike Trout. He went eight innings of one-run ball. He struck out 12 against the Angels. You want me to play this at bat through? Uh, yeah. So his best pitch, curveball. And for a, for a while, he's been kind of fastball curveball, sinker curveball only. So yeah. Mike Trout's the best guy in baseball at hitting the fastball down. So he went eight on 12. Like there's something special going on with his fastball or else these balls are hammered. Like you don't really throw those to Trout twice. And then this is a new wrinkle, right? This is his new cutter slider thing. So the reason I was talking about familiarity, right? They're in the same division. They've played each other a lot. Valdez has faced this guy every time he's played the Angels his entire career. This may be the first time Trout has ever seen him throw that pitch. Interesting. Okay, so he goes curveball at 78, missed off the plate away. Yeah. Sinker at 96, low and in. Sinker yeah. at 97, just below the zone. He gets foul balls on both Right, Like, sinkers. pause it right there or go back to the last pitch. Yeah. Like, if you look at somebody's heat chart, there's nobody in the world that has a hotter heat chart than Mike Trout fastball right in that area. Oh, it's it's insane. <laughs> yeah. So he goes back-to-back sinkers there. Yeah. And, I mean, those are like blistered foul balls, both of them. Right. And you can see he has no expectation that those are foul balls on either of those swings, right? He swings and he's kind of like – in. it's not like he's following it right off the jump or you'll see guys trying foul balls off. Like, Trout thinks he's going to hammer both those balls. Got you. So it takes a special sinker to make him do that. Yeah, and I like I think Framber has a great sinker in general, but I think even for him, he probably had to have a really good one for him going that night because Mike's probably faced him twenty five times. So kind of what this what this always made me think of because I think about this with pitchers that excel at maybe what the hitter's also strength might be, and this is a perfect example. Framber's at the best at the bottom of the zone, as you mentioned, and yeah. you know, Mike Trout, that's where he eats. How do you balance the, you know, pitching to your strength while versus, you know, pitching to the hitter's strength if there's an overlap in that regard, like there is right here? And this is the be- arguably one of the best hitters, if not the best hitter of the modern era. And here's Framber still pitching to his strength. Yeah, uh, you know, certain guys can really do that. Obviously, Clayton has been the best example I've ever seen of that, of pitching to his strengths almost universally. Um, For me, it's a little different. I I think, at least me personally, that's how I've always tried to pitch, is be able to throw enough pitches that I can kind of throw to everybody's weakness. But, like, Mike Trout's a hard to bat no matter what you have. And he's been tough on me because there's very few things that I feel very comfortable doing. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of a tip of the cap to, to Framber for going right with what he does well. But I, I also would venture to say that 96 and 97 were probably two of the best fastballs that he threw in this game. And it's in the fourth. Like, he feels good. He knows what he's doing. He's loose, but he's not tired, right? Yeah. And then he unleashes these 97-mile-an-hour sinkers, right? So there's toying with it. And, you know, Trout probably walks up saying, like, all right, he's 93, 95. And then he goes 96, 97 with real sink. Like, it, it, it is tough. It's tough to handle, right? I love this. And then three. he, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I love these three matchups stacked the way they are because Cole, it's two pitches that he goes to and gets Buxton, like two good yeah. fastballs, two good curveballs. With you, you have a battle against Buster you get creative for the punch out right you do something that is against typical thinking with Frambert you mentioned like this is creativity in a nutshell here you're facing the best hitter on the planet he fouls off your best pitch twice after you missed outside with like I I mean his curveball is his best pitch so you missed outside with your best pitch then Mm -hmm. you go to your bread and butter your sinker and I mean like again two hardest sinkers that he probably throws this night and and he races him foul so he gets creative. Like he forces creativity in his arsenal in the fourth pit of an at bat to open. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can see a lot of lefties have been, even Julio and Framber have both put in this cutter slider hybrid left handed starting pitcher pitch into their arsenal, right? Like you'll just see a lot of guys put the same pitch in in certain years because the swings and the approaches are, are dictating that. Right? <laughs> For, you know, for me, it was always I had the hard slider and then I turned it into more of a cutter because 
the game dictated I needed to get lefties out at a better rate and get them on the ground. So that cutter was a big thing. Same thing with these guys. But for all you know, like Framber after last season went home and literally thought, how can I get Mike Trout out? Like, yeah. if you want to boil it down, like, yeah, it'd be great for him to have a little cutter in general. But for him to go and work on it, it's probably burned into his mind that on one, two, after I threw two sinkers to Trout, I don't know where else to go. And if I had that cutter, that's what I could throw. And then he executes it, right? Because obviously he's down and he goes eight on 12 with nothing. And, you know, like, but that's kind of the, that's what the off season's for. That's what spring training's for. That, like, I guarantee you, if he faced him in spring training, he would never throw on that pitch. Got you. Got you. But like, for, for instance, I found a changeup a couple years ago and every lefty that I thought saw me well, like Charlie Blackman has always hit me well. In spring training one year, I threw him nothing but changeups because hmm. I didn't. I knew it wasn't very good. I knew it didn't matter. I probably wasn't going to throw him any of them, but I wanted him to think that I was going to throw him changeups all year. Interesting. I love that. I love the mind games. So it's part of it. But you know, three good at bats, obviously three, three pitcher on top of bats, which I like. But no. It's, it's interesting. It's funny you said that was Buster Posey's last at bat. I'm going to get cream for this. Not cream, but Buster Posey's last at bat. I think he hit his last homer in the big leagues off of me in the playoffs, which it's kind of a – that's a weird one. Maybe when I look back, it'll be like, oh, that's kind of cool. Buster Posey's last homer was off of me, but it was in the playoffs. So it did hurt. <laughs> I'm sure it hurt, man. I get it. Hey, Walker Bueller, this was freaking awesome, man. We, we've held you long enough. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you next week, yeah? Perfect. Sounds good, fellas.